we're the Temple Diamond Gems, and we're the UDA Top 5 National Champions. And you're watching Owl Sports Update. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to the first installment of our sports update in 2010. I'm Josh Filomino. Beside me is my partner, Tom Monfiletto. It was a busy break for Temple Athletics, and we'll do our best to make sure you're kept up to speed. We'll also introduce you to the talented and crowd-pleasing Diamond Gems dance team. But first, the men's basketball team continues to receive national recognition. For the previous two years, we've seen the Temple men's basketball team win the A-10 tournament and receive an automatic bid to the field of 64. This year, the Owls have surged to number 15 in the rankings, and if they continue to roll through the regular season, an automatic bid may not even be necessary. Beating Xavier, the only other conference unbeaten, would certainly help their cause. Back from break, students packed the League Course Center to see Temple jump out to an early lead, helped out by this pretty dish from Ryan Brooks to LaVoy Allen. Next possession, Allen backing down the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters, kicks it out to Big Daddy Craig Williams for Corey, giving the Owls an 18-15 lead. Xavier big man Jason Love with a little sky hook here went 6 for 6 from the field, but five of those buckets came in the first half. Temple leading scorer Ryan Brooks answers going coast to coast, two points plus the harm, sinks the free throw to put the Owls up 37-29. In the second half, Brooks continued his dominance with a Jordan-esque, well, uh, maybe Jordan-esque lay in here. Brooks led all scorers with 22 points and he also uh, added seven rebounds. Jason Love here puts in his only basket of the second half, plus the foul, trimming Temple's lead to 41-39. Temple stretches lead to eight when Jordan Crawford cuts it to five with this three. But the comeback stopped there as Xavier was forced to foul in the final minutes of the game. Ryan Brooks made six of six free throws in the final 30 seconds of the game, throwing the dagger in Xavier and helping the Owls stand alone at first place in the conference. In the win, Temple shot 53% from the floor, which is their highest shooting percentage to date. Your final, 77-72. Following the Xavier victory, the Owls headed to the boogie down to play the lowly Fordham Rams and kept them winless in the conference with a 62-45 victory. Fernandez dropped 13 points along with three assists and three right rebounds while Scooty Randall came off the bench to contribute 12. But all good things must come to an end. Wednesday night, the Owls had their six-game win streak snapped in a loss to the Charlotte 49ers, 74-64. Fernandez ended with only three points thanks to some foul trouble. The Owls shot just 35% from the field. Temple drops his first conference game, and the Owls are now 17-4 and four overall. We're not quite done with the men's basketball team yet. While most of us were spending our break with our family, handing out each other's gifts, dodging the mistletoe, and celebrating the bring of the new year, the same could not be said for the men's basketball team, who played a total of eight games during that span, including one against the highest-ranked team in the nation. Our own Josh Rotenberg turns back the clock and helps explain how the Owls ended up nationally ranked. The men's basketball team finished off 2009 riding a seven game winning streak and cracking the top 25 for the first time since 2001. In their first appearance of 2010, Temple took on Kansas, the number one ranked team in all of college basketball. The Owls couldn't keep up with the Jayhawks as they lost 84 to 52. It's hard to win every game, so Coach Dunphy reminded his team that it's just. Another step along the way is kind of our slogan. That slogan helped the Owls quickly forget as they completed their winter break schedule on a four-game winning streak, including three conference wins and two Big Five victories. They know why they've been successful, and they know how to keep it going. I think we're really together as a group. I think there's some toughness, some really good le senior leadership with uh, Ryan Brooks and Louis Guzman and, uh, and Rafael De Leon. Continue to play with an extreme amount of confidence. You know, we're, we're uh, playing pretty well right now, but we've got to continue, can't get complacent, and uh, just got to continue to head in the right direction. With having the hardest non-conference schedule in Division I, the Cherry and White know they've had a tough road, but are soaking it all in. This season has just you know, been tremendous. It's uh, definitely showing the hard work that we put in the past couple of years and with the coaching staff and, and putting in their system with these guys and us just buying in. Becoming number one in the conference was a big goal for the team, but they know their hard work is just beginning. 
The Owls went 7-1 over the holiday break, only losing to the number one team in the country, Kansas. If they keep this up, it'll be hard to stop them from winning their third straight Atlantic 10 title. We're going to need to continue to play well and, and be timely in our shots, timely in our defense and uh, that's that's the biggest thing we can look forward to. It's going to take an extreme amount of focus. You know, this is a tough league. There are a lot of teams that that, that can beat you on any given night. We got to stay focused. Got to stay together. Reporting for Al Sports, I'm Josh Rotenberg. The Big Five Hall of Fame will induct legendary Temple coach John Chaney Friday, January 29th. Chaney coached the Owls from 1982 to 2006 and became Temple's all-time winningest coach. He helped Temple to 516 wins along with 17 NCAA tournament appearances and five trips to the Elite Eight. Cheney will be honored Friday uh, at, the, at a luncheon at the Palestra beginning at 11.30 a.m. Uh, fellow former coaches Raleigh Massimino of Villanova and Bill Speedy Morris of LaSalle will join Coach Cheney into the hall. You can purchase tickets to the event for $40. After starting the season 9-1, the winter break did not treat the women's basketball team so well. The Owls finished their break going 500-4-4. Even with the team struggling, the Owls are tied for second in the A-10 with only one conference loss. They were currently riding a three-game winning streak, looking to extend it this weekend against Big Five opponent Penn. To McGonagall, where Kristen McCarthy will look to lead her team to her fourth straight win against the Quakers. Here we are in transition. McCarthy... Kicking it out to Thames, who sinks this jumper for two of her 10 points on the day. Then it's K Mac again, shooting and hitting the three ball. She laid the team with 13 points. And on the other side of the ball, Penn's Amy Donovan hits this jumper. But it was all the owls in the first half, as Williams in transition with the no looker to Wallace for one of her 10 dimes on the day. In the second half, the Owls' offense wasn't as strong, only scoring 23 points. But it was the defense who turned it up, only allowing 12 second-half points. Here's a steal by Edie. And then forcing the walk here, the Owls' defense really looked their best. The Owls would take this one 55-31. to 31. The Owls added another win to their current streak against St. Louis, 63-48. Of course, who else but Kristen McCarthy led the team with 22 points. The men's gymnastics team took first place in the Navy Open this past weekend. Senior Patrick, don't call me Paul Ham McLaughlin, cruised to two first place finishes, giving the Owls enough points to sink everyone's battleship. The Temple Women's Gymnastics team placed third at the Ursinus Quad Meet on Sunday. The Owls were led by sophomore Kareem Williams, who tied for first on the floor exercises and second on the beam. The Cherry and White will travel to Rutgers this weekend.